Hello and welcome back to Kena Plays Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Let's go. Um, this is another new stream. Um, it's been two days since we last played. I think I remember what's going on, but we'll see. I do remember though that at the end of the last stream, we found out that the note that we found in the caretaker's safe was written by Von Karma. So the sus motherfucker really is sus. <laughs> Let's go. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could Von Carmen know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both pers persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscathed. Oh? What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Shit, I wonder if Von Karma shot from outside the room. Did they even do a ballistics match on the bullet that was inside Edgeworth's dad? I mean, the gun was shot twice, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's possible that... All three people in the lift were passed out cold. Von Karma gets the door open, shoots him in the heart, and dumps the gun in there to frame the clerk. The murder of the defense attorney a few days ago may not be the first time he's killed. That's probably a stretch. I'm, I might be completely off on that. But that's the possibility. Huh. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? To recover from having murdered a man, probably. What do we do, Nick? Von Karma's going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? 
I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. No, it fucking isn't! For one thing, there's a completely different term for it. It's called manslaughter. And that, and even that is only when you kill someone while intentionally trying to hurt them, but not intending to murder them. There is such a thing as ac completely accidentally killing someone. What the fuck is this court system? <laughs> I know that. Bullshit, Phoenix. You clearly know jack shit. <laughs> I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. And yeah, at best it'd be gross negligence, surely. Well... I don't know, I mean, gross negligence is... doing so... Yeah, yeah, gro... I should... I think gross negligence sounds about right to him. I mean... Usually it's, like, not following safety procedures and stuff like that. Something in, that you've done intentionally that has the unforeseen circumstance of leading to someone's death. And I suppose throwing the gun would do that. I mean, because no reasonable person would expect throwing a gun to cause it to shoot. I mean... I mean, I don't know much about guns, but I know that there's a whole mechanism for firing. The hammer strikes a primer in the bullet case, which sets off the spark that ignites the gunpowder that shoots the bullet. Well, if you just drop, if you just throw the fucking gun, you're not pulling the hammer back, and you're not squeezing the trigger to pull the hammer back. So how could that set off a bullet in the first place? Much less two, since we know the gun was fired twice. And yeah, it surely would have had the safety catch on, anyway. Although I don't think all guns have safety catches. But I mean, it's, it's a fucking pistol, it should. Uh. Times like this, I really wish I knew more about guns. But then I also wish I could easily get to a gun range. I mean, there, are, there is a shooting club in my area. I just don't know if it's somewhere I can reach by walking or not. That's one of the reasons I took up archery. Because it's just fucking cool. <laughs> I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick... Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. Yeah, or in the oxygen-deprived state, he's completely fucking wrong about the... about the events that happened. Edgeworth may be way off in what he thinks happened. I still think he threw the gun, then passed out, and as he was passing out, he heard the gunshots. Or he heard the gunshots while unconscious, and his brain just pieced things together wrong. And it quite literally was just a dream. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. Yeah, I understand. The police materials, huh. Now we... I think we triggered this... Oh no, we triggered this with the letter from the safe. Um, 
Did we actually share the case file with him last time or not? Well, it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt showing him again, anyway. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of- yeah, we already read this one. I remember that completion of one, not one but two, trials part. Alright, um, that might be a hint to go back to the records room. What he said there about the notes. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. Eh, you'd never give me any useful information when I ask you what to do. <laughs> yeah, that could also be the case, Termo. That when he threw the gun, he shot the window, and then the clerk picked it up and shot his dad. Eh. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma's in there now anyway. But... You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yeah, you just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room? N Nick, let's hurry! Ah, welcome Angelic Guardian. Yeah, stream seems to be going alright so far. So, there, uh, well so far. Apart from my flubs and terrible voice acting. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> What's Von Karma doing in the records room? Is he trying to plant evidence? Is he trying to update the DL6 incident report? Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. And yeah, we got the we we borrowed the doggo for a little while. We played with Missile. Had him scare the crap out of butts. <laughs> and, and, and eat all the hot dogs. <laughs> yes, he is the good boy. <laughs> Huh? Why are the drawers here is open? Someone must have been looking at it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. Huh. Unsolved cases? Nick! The file for DL6! It's completely empty! What? What are you doing here? Yeah. Von Karma! You. How do you know my name? What? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? With Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. Oh, Jesus, that face! Holy crap! <laughs> I, was, I was focusing so much on the writing, I didn't even look up then. Jesus! You will eat your bibbers. Yeah. <laughs> Von Dracula. That's the, about right, Angelic. <laughs> Holy crap! They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. First though, let's finish our investigation in case we find any evidence before he shoves us out the door or something. This large drawer's half open. The label on the drawer reads unsolved cases, evidence. 
All this stuff in here looks like random junk. Only the evidence for the DL6 incident's missing. I can guess who took it too. Run call me. Looks like there are files inside that glass case. The case is so dusty I can't see what's inside. Nick, it's locked! They must keep important case files in there. This cabinet is where they keep evidence of current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons, others are question marks. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick! What do you think this clothespin is for? Don't touch that, it's evidence! <laughs> yes, that is a fun fact indeed. Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. And for some reason, Alucard is Dracula's son in the Castlevania series. Instead of being him reincarnated or anything. There are shells stuffed with case files in the back of the room, too. Forgotten cases, rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is gain to me. Here are files of collected case reports. There's quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here too, quietly gathering dust. Okay, so no, there was jack shit in there! <laughs> Alright, Van Karma, what have you got to tell us, you snooty bastard? Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karman, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defence attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Huh. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. Really, Phoenix? You can't imagine a reason why Von Karma, a prosecutor who hates a defense attorney, would want to teach that attorney's son to be a prosecutor. You can't wait, you can't put those two together there, Phoenix. That he maybe sees it as a, a really big insult to the father to be teaching the son to be a prosecutor? No? Just just gonna go over your head, that one. Okay. See, even he says, seriously. It's like, bitch, please, can't you work this out? <laughs> that, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Oh my. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So, Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 in court tomorrow. Ooh. Should we let him know we've got this? See if it rattles him. Well, it's not like he's going to be able to steal the evidence from us if we do. I mean, we're in the middle of a police station, so... Mr. Van Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to make, commit murder. You even wrangled in Boo Boo too, didn't you? 
Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. What the fuck? He's just outright admitting it? Um, you realise that there are two of us here? We have two people to put to act as witnesses to you admitting this. What the fuck? So, so you admit it? You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? N Nick, what is that thing? What the fuck? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Why? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now, give me the letter. Fuck! No! Whoa! What are you? N Nick, run! Maya! Ah! <laughs> Out of my way. Ah! You really should have run there, Nick. I know, Tomo, but us being in a police station is a logical place to be safe. This game does not know what logic is. <laughs> oh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 in evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. And being too fucking stupid to testify against him and get the police to arrest him. I mean... Dude, Nick. Not only did he do this in a police station where surely there are cameras and where the police, where even if there aren't, the police can easily testify to the fact that all three of you were in that room at the same time. You showed the letter to Grossberg. So that's th at least three people, including yourself, who can testify to the existence and contents of that letter and that it's um, Karma's handwriting. There is no logical way he gets away with this! Come on! Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Well, yeah, that too, Tom. If, if they weren't complete fucking morons, they would have photocopied it, at least. But we're dealing with Phoenix Wright and Maya, so... Somehow I doubt they have a copy. M Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! Ooh! Is this gonna jumpstart her powers? Is she not gonna wake up? Is it gonna be Mia again? Is it the return of Tits McGee? Fuck! No. We're still stuck with this, dumbass. <laughs> the letter? Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are uh, 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 you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Well, of course you're useless as a lawyer. You have literally no experience whatsoever apart from having been just accompanied us to court twice. 
you're not trained. You really need some training. Seriously. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Me? <sighs> there has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self confidence first. Me? She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number 7. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. Oh-ho! I remember. Von Common was holding this when Maya jumped him. Oh! Now there's an interesting thought. Now I don't, I don't think this is the case. But what if the gunshot that Larry heard wasn't a gunshot? What if that was just a party popper? What if the gun that has been fired three times? The third shot was 15 years ago. I mean, I've got no fucking clue if they could even tell that sort of thing. But what if the murder weapon is the same murder weapon? And, it, and the ballistics will match this bullet. Prove it to you, May. Yeah, but that ruining everything we've done so far would be very much on point for this game, wouldn't it, Tomo? Having the answer be a complete and utter Deus Ex Machina that you could never have possibly worked out on your own, that wouldn't be surprising. Yeah, me yeah. Like I say, Tim, I think that is a stretch, but I mean, it could still be the same gun. Just that, obviously, you can't. Uh, they can't actually do a test to find out that it was shot 15 years ago. <laughs> it's just pretty sus that we'd get the bullet now. I mean, the only use for the bullet would be if we can do a ballistics test on it and tie it to the current murder weapon because I seriously doubt he's going to just find the murder weapon from 15 years ago, I mean surely that would have been in the evidence that Von Karm has just stolen anyway that is all, that, yeah that's probably the case there too, <laughs> maybe they only know it was fired three times because there were three bullets missing from the mag Maybe you can't actually just do any sort of testing on the gun to see how many times it's been fired. I don't know. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Sarah Connor. Today things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Ah! What's the big idea? Is it, sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think stun guns charge your body l with static electricity. But... Uh, I don't know. 
That just seems weird. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Yeah, but he looks so cute and vulnerable every time he looks towards us. You need a beard. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Yeah. What are you doing? Sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Meh. Maybe you should go outside and discharge. Giggity. Right. Good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Hey, Gumshoe. Whoa, yeah, pal. What's going into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, a captured old runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm gonna prove it. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defence is ready, Your Honour. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right. Very well. Didn't expect him to talk. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Well, Phoenix, to be fair, he tends not to say jack shit. So it's kind of a surprise to have him actually replying to the judge for once. After all, he clearly has contempt for him. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defence asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defence to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Just have May go over and give Von Karma a hug. <laughs> zap the bastard. <laughs> of course, maybe she could zap um, Yogi here, wake him the hell up. <laughs> He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the, the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, he will now testify. I, I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Hmm? Uh, I'm real 
feel sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running right away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Yeah, that's not coached whatsoever. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? Should just throw a boot at his head, like that classic animation. <laughs> he has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. How? Huh. Yeah, I'm real sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realised you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. Well, I wasn't running away or nothing. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I said quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I, uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? Food? Well, Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well... I kinda got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Van Karma. No one's gonna believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please! Your Honor, come to your senses! I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh... Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. Hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. <sighs> How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. Hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Uh, I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. Without the letter, I'm not sure how we'd prove the motive. Ah! Ooh! Ooh! Actually, we don't need the letter to prove motive, do we? Because we have... We still have the excerpts from the DL6 incident report, which includes mentioning specifically that his, fi his fiance committed suicide. That should be plenty motive, shouldn't it? I'm going to present that. That should work. 
Shit, it didn't work. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Yes, that statement does contradict the evidence. God damn it. It contradicts page three where it specifically says that... Ah, oh, but I suppose we need to prove his identity before we're allowed to say that we can prove his motive, don't we? Shit. Yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Alright, let's keep pressing him for now, see if we can make him like, slip up somewhere then. Shit. <laughs> God, I, re I really thought we'd got it there. How can you say you have no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes? Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But, does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honour. The witness has said he has nothing to do with the case, and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or, are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. His name is Yanni Yogi. A former court bailiff. The fuck? Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. Figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a pa famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? Fuck. This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do do this now. Yeah, I was thinking the bird as well, Tomo. I mean, the fact that he named it after his fiance. But the question is just... Does it say how old the bird is? No. What about profiles? Do we have a profile of the bird? No. Damn it, if we knew for certain that the bird was less than 15 years old, then we could clearly say, yeah, he definitely knows. <sighs> Problem is, parrots can live like 20, 30 years, can't they? Or, can they? or is it even longer than that? If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? Yeah, I, I think I'm underestimating when I said 20, 30 years to him. I think he's like 70 odd years, can't he, or something? I don't know. 
It's okay, it's actually quite simple. You're on it. Please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see, that makes sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Huh. Motherfucker, he's deleted. That was inc included in the evidence that he got rid of, isn't it? I mean, you'd think he'd, they'd have his records on file outside of the DL6 incident report, because you'd think they'd just have fingerprints of people who work in the courthouse anyway, wouldn't you? Hmm. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? The fuck? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff. Yup. What? Yugi, you sneaky bastard! You burn your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. Shit! <laughs> well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Um. Hmm. It seems that the case has been decided. No. Um. While it's reasonable to think that they would keep fingerprints of people who worked in the courthouse, Tomo, I don't think that it's reasonable to expect them to have kept DNA on them, much less to have taken DNA over 15 years ago. I mean, they've been using DNA for a long time now, but I don't think they would take samples of it. I know what happened. I know everything. Yeah, but tell me why would they... T Even though he was a murder suspect, I don't see why they would take DNA sample when he was already in the lift. <laughs> I mean, th there would be DNA everywhere of him. It doesn't really help when they know for a fact that he was in there. So it'd be kind of pointless to take it. Plus, even if they did take the DNA sample then, that would be included in the incident which he stole all of the information from. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. Yeah, the parrot. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. The parrot might be able to. Polly, what's the caretaker's name? Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you'd like to cross-examine this parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Oh, you dumb bitch, you just given us the way in? <laughs> oh, that is so fucking stupid in every possible way. I mean, it's dumb as fuck that you would give us the chance, and it's dumb as shit that we're even considering doing this. Bring... Bringing a parrot on the stand? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, god damn it. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross examine his parrot? Fuck it, why not? Wh what is it, Nick? No, you're not gonna. You're on it. The defence would like to take Mr. Von Karma upon his proposal. 
we're at the point of fuck it, so bring it. <laughs> Take Mr. Von Karma up on my proposal. Exactly, Your Honor. I'd like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. This is so fucking stupid. What is this the fucking bullshit? <laughs> Order. Order. <laughs> yes, I agree. This is fucking dumb. Um, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Objection. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the pirate, Von Karma. Fuck you, no take backsies. <laughs> I have the right to do as you suggested. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. But Nick, this is crazy! Well, still want to go through with your little game? Yeah, fuck it, I'm screwed otherwise. <laughs> Let the parrot take the stand. I'll cast examine it, Your Honor. Are you fucking serious right now? This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Hong Kong has rigged every piece of testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Well, at least they've coloured in the eyes this time, so he's not trying to devour our soul. That's quite a bird. Please, tell us your name. Name. Um, Your Honor, you have to ask Polly to say things. She only responds when you say a name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ah, uh, hmm. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please, uh, testify for us. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I have no fucking clue. What do we do, Mayor? Um... Dude. Both you and Maya know how to get the parrot to answer questions. Just call her by her name. Jesus Christ. Seriously? You witness, really? For fuck's sake. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Okay, for shits and giggles, what's the safe number? <laughs> Wait, maybe she'll at least do that right. Maybe I'll get her to say the number that's safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number to the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight! One, two, two, eight! My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, yes. Yes, it fucking does. It's actually extremely important. 
Actually, it does. That's what I, why I had to say it. Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Booyah, bitch! The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright. Where in this file is something related to that safe number? Um, well I better read it so I don't answer the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure it's the suspect data. No, doesn't say the date there. Okay, case summary. It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28. Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Ha! <laughs> this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I am number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. Hmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? In the other two questions, dude. That's where... Nick, we're getting close. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. <laughs> Very well, witness. You may continue. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of it. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Yeah, I just want to ask more questions. Yep, let me make me ask questions. Okay, that was the same info as before, so here we go. What's your name? Duh. Maybe I should get to say a name. Polly! Polly! What's your name? Polly! Polly! Squawk! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? you damn right it fucking does. Yeah, it does. Really? Ha. Huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, it's not a fucking bluff. We're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. You're on it. The proof that the pirate's name reveals the caretaker's identity is the suspect section of the of the DL6 case file. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the pirate's name? <laughs> well, we will present 
this evidence after the break next time on Kino Plays Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. New episodes upload daily to the YouTube channel 9pm UK time. Thank you for joining me, take care and goodbye.